Good morning, everybody. It is August 20th here this morning. Um, we actually switched into hardwood spring wheat here uh, just because we had some wheat besides some mustard in a, in a farther area. So we wanted to clean it all up before we continue on the mustard run. But uh, anyways, I thought this video we should, should talk about the little things. Um, the little things that John Deere did right, little things that Aco did right with their ideal combines, and maybe some of the little things that they didn't do right. So let's talk about that. First, it's the fridge. Um, in the ideal combines, it was a cooler and it would melt your cheese in there uh, during the afternoon. Like it just didn't keep things cool. Uh, John Deere did it right. They went to their fridge like they have always had. And but on the X9, I don't, I can't verify this on the new 790s. I don't think it is because the fridge is a little bit different. But anyway, on the X9, they actually put a light in there. So uh, I know those are just like your power and your temperature setting lights. But when it is dark out and you're calm by a night, you can open that thing up and it lights up your whole little fridge in there. So that is pretty nifty because that way you can see where you hucked your bun without actually feeling around out there while you're on auto steer, you know, clanking around trying to figure out where the heck that thing is. So that's awesome. The next thing is the sound system. I've always said that John Deere has the best sound system and of course the X9 doesn't uh, let you down either. Um, although in saying that, I'm pretty sure that either I'm going deaf or they could have made the sound system a little bit louder because I can crank this thing as loud as it will go. In fact, I run it at like the three quarters level and it doesn't seem piercing. And I guess my Bluetooth on my phone is turned all the way up. So I feel like they could have went a little bit louder there, but either way, uh, it's a great sound system. Comparing that with the Ideal, there's still no comparison. Next thing we want to talk about is cup holders. So on the uh, John Deere X9, we have five cup holders of all different shapes and sizes for whatever you might need. Down here is just uh, some extra storage. But I don't know what you would use it for because you can't reach anything down there anyway. You could use it as a trash can, huck some stuff down there, I guess, if you wanted to. But uh, regardless of that point, um, it is what it is. Now, I do like the shelving use, uh, shelving uh, in this corner pocket right here. I don't know exactly what I would use that for yet. Um, in my opinion, John Deere missed the boat here. Uh, they have all these uh, USB plugs here, auxiliary ports. Um, they're missing two things. One is they need to have a uh, wireless charger so you can throw your cell phone. It needs to be a pretty good size. You know, they had the opportunity here to do that, but they didn't. Uh, the number two is they need a converter in here so you can plug in a 110. You know, us farmers, we're out here like 18 hours in a day. And I guess sometimes we get hungry and maybe sometimes we get sick of eating buns all the time. <laughs> Oh man, but you can get all these different like ovens and coolers and yes, most of them do run on 12 volt, but some do not. Some you actually need a 110, the good ones you need a 110 and uh, they could have put a converter in here so we could have plugged that thing in. And then once you already have your 110 power, now you can bring out your Keurig, your Tassimo, whatever, whatever brand that you want to use. You can bring that thing out, you can stick it down here. Why? Because you actually have enough room to do so. Right down there, you can store a little bit of water in there or you have your water in your uh, water jug. And you can stop on the corner of the field. You can take your five, 10 minute little walk around, take a little break, perk yourself a fresh coffee and then continue on down the field. How did we miss that? Now let's compare that with the ideal. Uh, the ideal obviously did not have a wireless charger. It did not have a, um, a 110 power outlet. I don't even know if it had a USB. I have to think about that for a second. You know, I ran it for three years. You'd think I'd remember that. Huh. Anyways, I can't remember if it did or not. But anyways, I think that the Ideals had two cup holders, I believe. I think they had one over here. They had one over here, I think. But now I'm blanking on that too. Ah, you know, I'm gonna have to scroll back through my my videos and take a look at the cab. But anyways, on the S series, important to know on the F series, S series, uh, they just have that one cup holder right here, I do believe. Next is sunshades. Awesome. 
the sun goes down and it blinds you when you're trying to look at your header. This is a nice feature, but it is not on the S series. It's only on the X series. Um, but they do not have one on this side. They need one on this side. They have one here. So we got two thirds, but we need one here. Now the ideals, Echo did that right on their cab. They had them all the way around, but they had magnet mounts. So you could kind of move them all over. You know, you could stick it here. If the sun's coming in the corner, maybe you're angling down the field. You could stick it up over here, although this would be kind of hard, you know. Um, stick it over here, you know, whatever you might. That actually worked really well. Um, and I'm pretty sure you could probably just go to parts and probably buy that. But anyways, um, they did the sunshade thing well. Now let's talk about the lights. You've heard me talk about yellow smell. No one likes yellow smell lights. Um, we all like the LEDs, you know, really good lights. You gotta have good lights because you're going at night. You know, we're, we're combine until 10 o'clock midnight sometimes. So, um, the fence, the fen tractors, uh, the fen tractors still have the best lights on the farm. They, those LED lights are just crazy. Um, they're still a wider bright than these John Deere's. Uh, even with these new lights, even with the new S790 lights and these new X9 lights, um, these ones still are LED, but they still have a tinge of yellow to them where the fent are like crisp white, crisp, crisp white. Um, I prefer the crisp white. I personally think I can see better like that. Maybe it's just my eyes. Maybe you guys can see better with the yellow smells. Maybe you guys can see better with the LEDs with a little bit more yellow. Everyone has their own preference, but mine, uh, I prefer the white crisp. Um, but, um, so I think comparing the lights the Fent Ideal Combines had the white lights all the way around, but you could not see nothing in front of you because they put their headlights down at the bottom of their cab right down there. And of course, as soon as you're running with your table up, you're just gonna hit your feeder house and your table and you can't see nothing, which means we had to put those light bars on. I don't wanna have to put light bars on. So I uh, wasn't super happy with how Echo lit up their combines. I'm happier with how I, uh, John Deere is lighting up their combines, though I feel like you know, uh, we probably still could have went a little bit brighter in my mind and a little bit further out. I can see really well right here. And then these spots are, are a whiter bright actually than the rest of the combine. And you can see right about where my fingers are. It'd be awesome to see a little bit higher. Yes, you can move them, but now you're gonna leave a black spot right here. So they're not bad. I know if they're the same lights that's on the 790s and my brother's saying the same thing, you know, uh, they're not bad. I think we could have done a little better, but they're not bad. Now let's talk unload, unload speed, you know, uh, and hopper size. You know, John Deere's coming out with a brand spanking new combine. You know, this X series are advertising, it's super hardcore, and they come out with a 420 and 460 if you get the 1100 uh, push hoppers. And on the ideals, they're 485, and I think the class can go up to 500 and 500 and change probably. Now, yes, maybe you can add some extensions, but it's not from John Deere. So that's a little bit of a disappointment, uh, especially on a class 10 combine or a class 11 combine, they're still under 500 bushels. Now let's talk about the unload speed. Nothing it can nothing can compare with the ideals in the unload speed. Un, they're like six plus 6.2 bushels per second. And I believe that the X has like a bushel uh, per second faster than the S. I think they're five something and then the S is four something something like that give or take uh, but anyways it's a noticeable difference um, another nice feature that the uh, ideal combines had was that I could on my screen while I'm unloading I had it's like a grain card I have four settings four is full ramming speed and you could knock it all the way down to one and maybe you just want to go real slow and top off a cart and then you can shut it off and you're good to go right and then it just closes down like a grain cart that was awesome. I like to have those options. This one you do not, um, but it does clean out the drag. Sorry. It stops the drag and cleans out the auger so that way you don't have to start a full auger. That is a nice feature. I'll give Deer that. But it does take a little bit longer. So when you're dumping on the go, you're, everything is funky dunky and all of a sudden you're like, yeah, okay, I'm done. And you shut, your, you shut, you shut it off and then it's going to go through its clean out mode so that way you don't leave your hopper. But it does take... I don't know, five, seven seconds, maybe 10 seconds, whatever it is. The grain cart guys, they just pull away. Like the thing is doing its little clean out, the spout's doing its little thing. I'll have to do a video about that. 
and it's still kind of going slow and the cartridge is burning off. Like, <laughs> I'm always like, whoa, 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 I got a deer ear, it's taking its time, all right? It's still gotta do its little clean out thing. Oh man, they don't even care, there's green flying everywhere. But anyways, um, so I'm not sure what to think about that. It does kind of get a little bit of annoying uh, that it's got to go do its little clean out thing. I'm sure there's a way around that. Maybe if I do something, it just shuts it off. But uh, also, let's talk about auger length. The ideals uh, had really long augers, and then when we stuck an extension on there, holy cow, we think we went to 30, I think they came with 33 or 34 foot augers, and I think we put an extension on mine, a three foot extension or something like that. But anyways, the auger is barely long enough on this X. I I would like to figure out how I could put an extension on I gotta get pretty dang close to that cart uh, with this 50 foot head. I like to be able to have a dance party, you know, I wanna have a dance party between my header and that track on that cart because I don't want a glitch to happen and glitches do happen. What is a glitch, Mike? A glitch is when you're going down the field, combining away, you know, you're dumping at six mile an hour or whatever you're doing and all of a sudden the grain cart whether it be a John Deere 2 track, which has happened, or the Fent uh, 930, which has also happened, or maybe it's a combine, which has also happened. I'm just going down the field, boom, I lose my GPS. And uh, I hope that you notice that you lose your GPS, GPS or you're gonna start moving into that cart. And if you don't have a dance party worth of room in there, it's gonna get bad news bears very quickly. Now on the uh, grain cart tractors, they've actually pulled, the GPS has actually pulled them right into the combine and quickly they grabbed it and yanked it back out or they would have just ran over the edge of my header. So glitches do happen on all makes. Echo, John Deere, Case, doesn't matter what it is, GPS glitches do happen. And if you don't have a dance party in there, you're not going to be having a dance party afterwards. Let's just say that. Anyways, so those are some of the details and some of the little things that we've really noticed uh, and some of the things that we think that we've missed so far. Also, let's talk about the seat. The massage seat, um, it's a nice feature go like that you got your heated and cooled seats you got your different ramming speeds of that that's pretty awesome um, also that you can swivel it it's kind of nice and then when you swivel it this way your armrest stays and your seat goes your armrest stays your seat goes so that's kind of nice and you don't hit anything no matter where your seat setting is you don't smuck your coffee mug or anything like that so that's nice that's a very nice feature uh, we both like that um, though the S series did not have this same seat now, as far as the outside, um, they put an airport, they put more airports on the X9. Um, I think they kind of maybe cheaped out a little bit with their hose, but whatever. So at least you can go around in different areas of your combine and blow it off. They did. I do not believe that they put an airport on the 790. I could be wrong, but when I talked to my brothers about it, they said they could not find it. Uh, they do have a couple other ports, but they're not up on the front. And I think that if you're gonna have a port on the combine, the second most, like you should definitely have one back on the engine compartment, but the second most important place is on the feeder house. Everybody wants to blow their feeder house off, their header off at night, at least we like to do that. So I definitely, you know, wouldn't be too hard to plumb it in, but uh, you know, you're spending near a million dollars on a combine, you think that they could just give you an airport on the front. Obviously the X9, as I've said before, has soft closed door. That is a cool feature, but they completely blew the boat on the ladder. The ladder is a very, uh, nobody likes the ladder on this combine. And uh, they do not have the rubber. Here, let's just go take a look. So if you come down here, there's no rubber in place, right? And it's pretty low to the ground. So there's no rubber, like on the S series, it's all rubber, like two steps or something. So that if you go through a washout or something, you know it kind of gives, or maybe you get stuck you won't rip your ladder off. Now, on the ideal combines, they did this right. Uh, you could swivel your ladder around for your move from your in cab. Awesome, and it also still had the rubber. And it had little LED lights going up all the way down the steps so you could see your steps while you're climbing down the combine at night. And yes, it still had the lights so that would all stay on like the John Deere's do. I do kind of miss the little LED lights, so it's a nice little feature. Um, but this ladder, like, I don't know where they dug this out of. But it's a very shaky... They went and got this from... I always thought that uh, Class and Fent, they went to Canadian Tire and bought an aluminum ladder that they could move around their combine. Like, the thing is like a $5 ladder, right? We're not really upgrading a whole lot here with the X9. 
And now to make it worse, since they don't have the rubber under there, the S series don't do that. Get bucked off your ladder when you want to go up. Anyways, because there's no rubber, you need to move it up. It even tells you you need to move it up. So you hold down on this button with your foot, you grab right here, put your other foot right here and yank it up, quickly grab here, lock it into place. Who is gonna do that every time? And even if you are gonna do that every time, how the heck is that not an electric button in the cab? You know, they'll give you a soft closed door but a button to bring your ladder up. Oh no, that's too much. <laughs> and then you just, and it's kind of, it's kind of got some shocks. So you just kind of lock that thing back down there like that. It needs to be like a sprayer. So when you hit the park brake, your ladder comes up. You hit the park brake again when you want to stop, your ladder goes down. That's not that difficult. But maybe it is for Don Deere, who knows? Um, I really do like our CNH spout that we have on the back of the combine. So that way you can move it, you know, when you're topping off a grain cart. That is a nice feature. I do like that. I guess while we're talking and looking at the outside, I really like on the X series that I can change my rotors and I have three speeds on my rotors right here. One, two, three. And then on this one is your feed accelerator. You got two speeds on your feed accelerator. All can be done right here. That is very, nice feature uh, on the S series on the S series you had to uh, go and shift a gear back there and on the ideal combines I think it was just an over centering lever or something it was it was a really easy one it was even easier on the ideal combines uh, than the S series but this would be equally as easy and actually better because I don't even have to put my shoes on to switch my rotors so that's awesome now let's talk about these fancy dancy low profile strobes that they have on here. These are your uh, morning lights, also your three quarters full and full beacons. They're junk. You can't see these things during the day. You actually have to look at the combine, wait for it, you're like, yep, yeah, yeah, he's three quarters. He's three quarters, like I said, where the other combines, like their S series, the older ones, I should say, because even the brand new S series won't come with these now, okay? They need the beacons. We prefer the beacons. Yes, they look a little, you know, like you've got whatever coming out of your cab, but you can clearly see those things rotating from the other side of the field in the afternoon. And you don't have to take this from me. You can talk to Frankels, you can talk to Jake, who are on the carts, and they hate you. And you can't hardly see them. Night, they're not bad. Night, they're not bad. You know, a nice strobe. But during the day, even the pilot who leads me, they're like, maybe Mike, you should go. We should put the new combines behind. Put the older combines up front. So that way people can clearly see the strobes going on the combines. So I'm like, well, that's kind of embarrassing. But thank you. I just bought a new combine and I don't even get to be up at the front because you can't see my strobes. <laughs> oh, man. Oh yeah, um, one nice feature on this X and the S series is always being these steer tires. Go down our little ladder here. Um, these are 750s. We had 750s also on the uh, Ideal Combines, but we can actually turn on just about one headland pass with a 50 foot header, where on the uh, Ideal Combines we had to make I'm not making this up. Three headland passes in order to turn those puppies. And we complained a lot about that. The tracked unit, the tracked unit needed four headland passes to get that thing turned around or you're gonna have to do three point turns to get that thing turned around. So those are some of the features. And I would say some of the key takeaways is that ladder, it's a hideous thing and how it's not on the park brake when you have an electric. They, they, they put everything else on there, but they totally shot the boat on that one. Uh, the other one is, I do not know how we don't have wireless cell phone chargers in this day of age. I can get that in my, uh, I can get that in 
a Kia, whatever, whatever kind of vehicle you want to get. Everyone has a wireless cell phone charger now and uh, power inverters. We should have power inverters as we're out here. We can throw in our little uh, Tasmos, Keurigs, whatever you want. Um, or maybe uh, these little hot boxes type things. I know they're 12 volt, but you can get really good ones that are, uh, you can plug them in and you can actually cook your food while you're going down the field. So those are some of the key takeaways. Um, I'm happy with the combine thus far. We're gonna keep chowing away. We keep finding new things like, oh, I like that, or oh, I don't like that. Um, auger length needs to be longer. I'm gonna figure out how we can put an extension, a three foot extension on that auger here yet. But yeah. All right, I think I've taken up enough of your guys' time. So basically, these are some of the little things that we've noticed thus far. I guarantee you we're gonna notice a heck of a lot more when we get going. And uh, oh, I just thought of some right now actually uh, but I'm gonna save it for another video so you guys have yourself a good one and adios amigos I know what you guys are thinking you're like well Mike you're just never happy buddy you're always complaining about everything you never you're never satisfied you're never happy you're always critiquing and, uh, and so on and so forth and you know what I am a bit critical holy crap we're full wow anyways um, uh, kind of squirrel lost my train of thought here but anyways Yes, I'll give you that. I am a bit of a uh, critical person when it comes to spending a lot of money on things. I expect a certain amount of uh, performance. You expect a certain amount of luxury. You, you, there's a certain bar that needs to be met for a certain price tag that you keep spending every time. You know, you're not going to go and buy a house and then be like, well, you know, we're not going to include a bathroom in this. You know what I mean? Be like you go into the Super Bowl. You're gonna get your friends and your family together. You're gonna to, you're gonna buy this beautiful suite for the Super Bowl. Okay, you're gonna spend the money. You're gonna get some people to help you pay for it. And uh, this is gonna be the best once in a lifetime experience, right? Here, this is your favorite team. You're there. This suite looks awesome from the outside. You're like, this is gonna be the greatest performance ever. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna be able to see it. You're gonna be able to smell their sweat. You're gonna be so close to them, and it's gonna be freaking awesome, right? Right. But you get there, you get you arrive in a limo, you get treated awesome, you get there, and then you, you're going through the Super Bowl, everything is going okay, and it's like, you know what? You just hanging out bar stools to sit on in there, you know? It's like, yeah, I got bar stools, and yeah, there is no bathroom in your suite, and you're like, man, it really it kind of, you know? And they didn't give you a free bag of chips in there. You gotta pay extra for all that, and you're like, man, I just spent this much money. You think they could at least throw in a free bag of chips? And then you're like, man, I don't know. I, I, Oh, and, and, and the sound is good, you know, it's 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 good, it, it's not blowing your mind, and then, you know, you can see okay, you really thought you could really basically smell their sweat, that it's how, that how awesome this suite was going to be, and I don't know, they're kind of far away, you can't, you can't really see them that good, you know, it's, it's a little disappointing, and you know, if, if you spent a whack of money for, for one of the best suites for the Super Bowl, you would you would probably complain a little bit about that. You're like, you know what, the, for the money I spent, I don't really think that we got our money's worth out of it, you know? If you're gonna go and spend $50 for the nosebleed way up in the corner, and yes, you're looking through the support beams of the stadium, and yes, you definitely cannot see them very good, and you definitely can't hear them very good, all you hear is the roar of the crowd, and you're like, yes, because we must have scored, or they scored, or I don't know what happened, because I can't tell, I can't see it, right? But you know what? You're not going to complain about that because you're at the Super Bowl. You paid 50 bucks for your tickets and you know what you bought. You're like, I expected to look to the support beams of the stadium and I expected to have poor visibility that being that high. You know what I mean? So that's the reason why. So now that I've concluded that, I'm going to continue to cut my six bushel crop. And you guys have yourself an awesome one. And thanks for following me around, you guys. Stay tuned for a heck of a lot more videos. Adios.